If I could shape foreign policy in its entirety, I would like to create a situation in which we and the Chinese and the Russians were more consciously aware of the shared interests that we have uh, rather than of the disparities in terms of the specific locus of different conflicts. If it is possible to carve out a deeper sense of shared responsibility among the most powerful states, and that may inf involve states with which we don't have congenial philosophical shared assumptions, that probably is the way in which at least initially we ought to go even if we go not towards greater cooperation, but towards a more convincing degree of shared awareness that there is no single uh, isolated opportunity for total triumph because everyone more or less has similar capabilities. And I think one has to, therefore, be guided by very careful monitoring of what is, is what it is that the Russians are doing, what it is that the Chinese are doing. Try to engage them cooperatively in areas where they have also interests and make sure that they understand that a sudden action by them will precipitate at least a similar response on our part, which will have a similarly paralyzing effect. And that, in turn, I think, leads to the notion that perhaps some of our concepts of traditional alliances have to be re reoriented in relationship, particularly towards China, which still has the prospect of being the major coal world power, and towards Russia once it gets out of this sort of Putin fascination with being uh, essentially a continuation of Soviet Russian Empire and the Tsarist Empire without fully realizing that it itself has to undertake a major internal change in order to be successful as a state. And in the Chinese case, I think the last two years there has been a sign of an increasing uncertainty as to what exactly ought to be the definition of China's role in the world. And I think that's a subject worth discussing with them at depth. And the more we can talk to them seriously and responsibly about it, the greater the chance that perhaps we can do more together uh, instead of increasingly becoming preoccupied with suspicions that each is deliberately turning against the other. And I think that is becoming increasingly a very pervasive suspicion. I began to think increasingly in the 50s, and then of course more and more clearly in the 60s, that the Sino-Soviet alliance has a high probability of splitting at some point, and that that would create an opportunity for which the United States should be ready and should take advantage of. And I began to notice that there were simply genuine disagreements between the Chinese and the Soviets or the Russians. And I also began to notice that increasingly the Chinese, even in the midst of great communist fervor, were above all else Chinese and very proud of that. And I also saw the Russians offending the Chinese by treating them like puppets. It seemed to me that the Chinese at some point would react if they could, uh, whether in terms of ideology or territorial issues or sheer pride. So I thought that would provide some reasonable explanation for a more balanced American relationship in which China had another option than simply being an addendum to the Soviet hostility towards us. And that made me feel that there is an opportunity here for some adjustment that over time would become advantageous to us. I once wrote a letter to Henry Kissinger suggesting that we do something along those lines. And there came a moment in the 1970s, first under Nixon and Kissinger and then under President Carter, in which there was an opening and the U.S. walked through that opening twice. Now we're going through a phase in which China is really emerging as a world power. And that's a whole new game. And I hope we'll succeed in managing it responsibly, avoiding provocations that one or the other side 
sees as directed against itself. I think in the last two years, uh, both sides have made errors, uh, which enable people to interpret their actions as deliberately hostile. And I think there has been a tendency to be too critical of each other without giving this very complex relationship a chance. And that could precipitate, I think, a very dangerous situation in the world. The question is whether they want to go too far, too fast, too soon.